It's that time of year again, winter forecast talk, and the two big ones, the Farmer's Almanac and the Old Farmer's Almanac, will break those down here and kind of react and analyze. Last winter was very warm across the eastern half of the country with temperatures well above average by several degrees in spots. A different story across the middle of the country and the west, where you typically have those boundary areas is where it is very active. That was certainly true with well above average snowfall across the upper Midwest through the northern plains, Rocky Mountains, and into much of the west as well. East definitely below average on snow due to the warm temperatures and well below average West Virginia, Eastern Ohio, through portions of Southern New York into areas of New England as well. Lots of those 35 degree events with mostly rain and not too much snow mixing in and not accumulating for sure. Will this winter be different? Probably a little bit. We'll break that down here in a little bit. This is the forecast for this winter from the Farmer's Almanac. Cold, but average snowfall. Cold and stormy, chilly and wet, cold and snowy. Okay, ooh, here, here's the fun, frosty, flaky, slushy. So the burr is back, according to the Farmer's Almanac. Now, who's gonna have really warm weather? Nowhere, really, that it predicts across the country. Typically, I'd say eight out of 10 times, if one part of the country is really cold, the other part of the country has to be pretty warm. It normally balances itself out. So we'll see, we'll see, right? What about the old farmer's almanac? It's a winter wonderland. They like the burr too, and this one is not as um, interesting. It's just cold and snowy for a huge portion of the country. Again, typically speaking, you're not gonna have this large of an area of the nation that's gonna have pretty similar type weather throughout portions of a whole winter. Cool and wet to the south, mild and wet, further off towards the south as well. We can see an active subtropical jet that could keep it very active across the south, but typically there's a dry area and a warm area somewhere. Let's look at some of the terminology. It likes to get into the details. Another east coast storm in March. Okay, potential blizzards early March. Heavy mountain snow across portions of early February. Unseasonably cold temperatures into the southeast mid-February. Okay, okay, this is like fortune telling a little bit. We like to get into all these details and specifics that climatologically, sure, it can happen during these points of the winter, but does it happen always like that? No, no, not at all. It's uh, not scientific really to be able to predict to that level of accuracy. What are the almanac facts? We go over this every year in our installment of this forecast. Sunspots and moon phases is what the almanac and the old farmer's almanac use. Prevailing climate cycles, whether folklore, proprietary formulas as well. They do not release the science that they actually use. So maybe it could be woolly bears. If you have all of that wonderful spot on the woolly bear, it's going to be mild to harsh. But if you have mainly the black, it's just going to be a harsh winter. The more black, the more harsh, super snowy. So we'll see. Maybe they use that. There's a whole bunch of winter folklore that could potentially be used in this super secret formula that really is no more accurate than a drop of a coin. Just we're flipping the coin. We're a 50-50 chance. Studies have ranged from about 40 to 50 percent accurate. That doesn't take skill. That's based on climatology, how it would typically work out. An actual meteorological long-range forecast? No, it's far from perfect. We're talking about forecasting three, four, five months out into the future. But there is skill there. There is a level of accuracy. It is more accurate than what you'd get with the Farmer's Almanac. All right, this is what we got going on right now across portions of the whole world. Sea surface temperatures, warm, super warm across portions of the central to eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean. That is a El Nino getting pretty strong and it looks to stay that way as we go well into the winter as well. So typically what happens during an El Nino, you have warm weather compared to average pushing across portions of the northern US. This is the active subtropical jet allowing for all of the more wetness further off towards the south. Sometimes because there's more clouds and rain, it can be where it's also on the snowier side of things because you get more cool air bouts and you get more of an active system. It just stacks your chances better. Dry air is often in the middle. We'll see if this happens. There should be some times where cold air does come down. 
Uh, we'll get more into the winter forecast details as we go forward. Thanks so much for watching.